What's going on guys? Stand Up Sales episode 10. We're getting into double digits here, David. Congrats for being consistent with us. Um, today's topic is going to be how salespeople should be compensated um, and what makes sense for the sales rep and what makes sense for the company and what we have seen in, in our lines of work that have made the happiest reps, which ultimately makes the happiest companies. Yeah. So this is kind of a slight deviation on why salespeople are great um, because we thought about this and the, the question kind of became, okay, what can we say about why salespeople are good that is actually beneficial, interesting, and kind of not a lot in reality, right? Like we can only blow smoke up our own asses and you for so long for it's kind of a boring conversation. So we were like, okay, what yeah. interesting things are there that happen when a salesperson is good? And then compensation is kind of a, a big pull for a lot of people that want to get into sales. Like you want to make a, a bunch of money. That's kind of, you know, a key driver for most people when you get into sales, or at least it comes one after you get your first sniff of some cash. So we thought, okay, let's talk about sales compensation. Yeah. So you have to compensate people on what they are in control of. I wholeheartedly believe that if you allow them to get paid on things that are outside of their control, it creates resentment inside of the organization because it makes the person kind of resent the closer, right? If you're an SDR, yep. um, if I set a meeting and it's qualified and I knew this was a good prospect, they showed up to the call and you somehow didn't close the deal, right? Or if you have an enterprise type company where your sales cycle is months long or weeks long, it's a long delayed gratification, right? So if you're, this is huge for commission only people, right? You wanna get them paid as fast as possible because that's the only way they can make money, right? They don't have a salary to, to fall back on. Yeah. Um, so people wanna eat. You, need, you need to pay SDRs on what they can control, which is if they show up and if they're qualified, that's really the two things that are the drivers. And I mean, that, that's kind of exactly what I preach to all of our clients. I think the, so I, I ran into this a couple of times where people were like, oh yeah, but like, why can't we just pay them per close? And it's like, well, you can, but they'll be fucking pissed. Yeah. Like they're, they're doing their job and they're not getting paid for it. The I just asked, is, yeah, I asked them that question. Yeah. Would you take that job and be there for six months? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, uh that would kind of suck. Yeah, it would. So don't do it to other people. Right. I think the, the big consideration, especially when you're an SDR and your entire job is just, you know, throw up alley-oops and hoping someone actually dunks it. If you're throwing them up and they're all dunkable and then you don't get paid, likelihood that you start looking for another job after like the fifth time it happens increases almost exponentially. And as soon as you hit double yeah. digits, you're one foot out the door. Exactly. And I mean, for a company, you have to think far sighted not nearsighted. Oh, I don't want to pay them immediately. The deal might not even close, but it's like, it's the long game. If they set 25 qualified showed meetings and those don't produce revenue is not the SDR that you need to be looking at. You need to be looking at your closing process and your offer and your pricing, right? Like they're doing, they're holding up their end of the bargain and yeah. make it as a qualified. So the biggest thing whenever I hear that is like, oh, well, they're going to set terrible shitty appointments yeah. no you make sure that they're not only showing to the meeting but they meet a baseline criteria so yeah. the whole job of the sdr on the discovery call on the cold call is once they get that commitment for the meeting then you ask the questions that need to be answered before it can go to the next stage yeah. it's like all right great john we're trying to talk wednesday with you know bill um just to you know confirm to make the best use of our next call you know, what are you guys doing in this? You know, are you using this software? Do you have this many people? Are you this revenue? Can you make yeah. the decision? Um, then you write those notes down and then you sell that meeting to the AE. Like, all right, this is the VP of merchandising at this company. They're a good fit because he told me this, they have a need, like close the deal. Like then you get paid when they show up because you've done your, your job, job in the process. Yeah, it is exactly. now on the closer to bring it home and they're paid on the deals they close in their control. Yep. And I think that it, it kind of segues into like when you are a closer and you do get placed on offer, like 
you need to understand the terms of the deal that you are about to close for. If you walk into an offer and in your mind, oh yeah, great, I get, you know, 10, 15% commission on a 20K deal, that is good money. You will make great money from this offer. If they yeah. don't tell you how long their sales cycle is, worry about it. Because yeah, it could be a 20K deal that takes six months to close. So you will be working for six months eating yeah. niche. And that's obviously something that you have to avoid. So make sure when you get on these offers, where you get, you know, big, sexy pay packets or whatever it may be, that you find out how long deal cycles are. Because otherwise you might be waiting a hell of a long time to get paid. What is your best closer making? What is your worst closer making? How yeah. many meetings do you have per week for me to take? Yeah. What is the average close percentage of your team currently? Mm -hmm. Also, grow on LinkedIn, see who the other closers are, yeah. and reach out to them. Hey, man, I'm interviewing with this company. How do you like your job? Yeah. Are you making enough money? Is it? Are you, do you like management? Like, do your research. Do your research. 100%. Do your research as a salesperson. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the other thing to consider is like going back to deal terms, little things like stuff that seems on inconsequential. Like, do you get paid at the end of the month? Do you get paid every time you close a deal? Do you have to account for like, um, payment processing charges? Are you getting pre or post payment? All right. All of these things don't matter when you have big numbers sat in front of you on like a, a term sheet. They matter yeah. a lot when you have to, when you figure out, oh, actually the deal cycle is six weeks long. So yeah. even if I close one today, I'm not going to get paid for at least until the end of next month. Oh, and the, the commission is post uh, processing fee. So I lose 3% of the deal value or 5% of the deal value, whatever it may be already. And then I get my commission. So I wait six weeks, potentially yeah. longer. And my commission is lower than I thought it would actually be. Find out this information before you start accepting job offers. And if it's high ticket, there's probably payment plans. Do you get paid on cash collected? Yep. Do you get paid on contract value? Mm -hmm. No, before you put on the hard hat, like know what the job site looks like. Yeah, <clears throat> huge, especially for an SDR as well. Like, am I calling inbound leads? Am I mm -hmm. calling outbound leads? Like, what is like, what is the goals and KPIs for me? Have you hired this role before? If you have, have people been successful in it? Have they stayed? Have they left? All of these questions should be answered before you sign a contract with a, with a company. I think the, oftentimes when you get into, when you get into commission only or like pay per, um, pay on result sales, the first instinct is just to run around like a fucking headless chicken, taking every offer that you can, because you're like, I don't know if any of these are going to make me money. So if I take a bunch of them, I'll probably make more money over the long term. And that is just not true. You will just yeah. burn out faster. And it will just be worse. All of them. And people know when you have another job. Yeah. Like I, I, I very fucking arrogantly say that I'm an excellent closer. Genuinely. I am. When I close for more than one thing, I am a, a marginally above average closer because my focus is split, right? Yeah. And it is just more difficult to know two offers inside out, to kind of be able to switch from offer to offer than it is to just be like, okay, I'm on this and I'm going to do this for like an extended yeah. period of time. The only reason that I think people should take on multiple offers at the same time is if you don't have the call volume. So if you have two offers, right, both of them have pretty mediocre call volume. So yeah. you, like, let's say f four or five a week, but both of them are great deals in terms of commission that you could make. Can you probably do 10 calls a week split over two offers? Yeah, probably. I reckon that's, that's, that's easily doable. Right. Speaking of call volume, actually, here's an interesting one. How many calls do you think a closer should be taking per day? Ideal world, magic, magic, genie and a lamp numbers. At least three. Okay. What's the maximum? seven to eight i i cap out about seven any more than eight and i'm like drained by the end of the day yeah you just end up brain dead by like call eight and you're just like let me finish i just wanted to stop i just don't also to like the the there is nothing worse if you have eight calls and you're like let's go big big commission day five dollars show up you're like 
I would rather just have three calls that just showed. Yeah, right? facts. Hundred like, percent. So make sure like there's processes and systems in place to make your salespeople the best versions of themselves. Yep. Consistent training, I think, is one of the big things that a lot of sales balls just completely forget about. Yeah. You get trained at the start and then, okay, it's now time for you to actually do the work. Get the fuck out of my office. And that's just stupid. It doesn't make sense. <clears throat> and like continually training on them. Yeah. Like a lot of people just are like, they throw them into a burning house and like, all right, figure out. Uh, <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> yeah, figure it out. Like the more support you give a salesperson, A, the longer they'll stay with you mm -hmm. because you've created a social connection with them take a genuine interest in who they are as a person. They're not just like a grunt that just closes yeah. the deal. And go That's into right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually know who they are. Like take a vested interest in your salespeople, right? Yeah. Sales is the lifeblood of a company. You don't have a company without sales. hundred percent. You, you can't, you can't do it. You can't live off referrals and scale a company, right? Um, like treat sure yourself to every like, marketing agency that exists right now. <laughs> Yeah, like treat your salespeople as if they also put the food on, they put the food on your table as well. Yeah. I think the, the like continual training thing, so like every week I have a call with the closers that we've placed on offers and it's like, okay, someone's getting, get, having one of their calls review today, we're going through it, we're gonna find out what you did poorly, what did you, what did you do well? We're gonna go through anything that I think you're missing out on right now, anything that seems foreign that you're not doing, we're gonna go back over that from the stuff that I've already taught you. And if you can do that effectively with your entire sales team every week, week in, week out, they will infinitely increase their ability to close. Like Yeah, even... and also if you have STRs and AEs, have them have their own meetings with each other without you. Like an STR or a setter and a closer or an AE should have a great relationship. Yeah. So if maybe a call doesn't show up, they ping the SDR and they call them right away and get them on the calendar, right? Like you should know like what is going on and have open lines of communication. And I think if you, if don't, you don't, it breaks. Yeah, that was exactly the point I was gonna make, right? Yeah. Because if, if it's always, oh yeah, well, the guy didn't show up and then the set finds out three hours later, they're like, well, what the fuck are you telling me now? That's useless <laughs> yeah. information. Yeah. I mean, the setter should also know when the calls run and ask, Hey, how did the call go? Yeah. I think um, that's, that's a really interesting one. So like after the call is scheduled to be done, the setter jumps back in like, Hey, how did that call go? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Just slack the message. Interesting. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, to me, as a setter, you need to do that. That's how you get paid. <laughs> when I was a BDR, like we, I didn't know if the meeting, so we were had MQL, SQL. We we're talking about this before we started the recording, but um, <clears throat> I would make an MQL. I would have to sell it to the AE, and then I could actually hop on Gong and listen live. And like once I heard they showed, I can hop off. So I knew that I did my job. I got someone that was qualified on the call. They showed up to the call. I'm like, All right, cool. Now I can continue to do my job. Yep. Um, but after the call, I would have to ping the AE. Like, hey, is that a sales qualified lead? Like, is that going to be put in the pipeline? Cause I only got paid on sales qualified yeah. I could set 17 meetings in a week, but if only two of them are viable business opportunities, I only get paid on two. Yeah. So it's in my best interest. And I would sometimes go and listen to the whole call. And I'd be like, mm, this guy kind of sounds like a good opportunity that I go to my manager and be like, listen to this call. And then he would go over to the AE's manager and be like, eh, actually Dylan's call should be in the pipeline. Um, cause the AE didn't want to put things that were like, eh, because yeah. they're now the hook for the forecasting. So like you need to be like on your shit as a setter and SDR to make sure that you're actually getting paid in the AEs and lying about stuff. Yeah. That's really interesting. That that's like internal work politics that you have to that you have to navigate. That's super interesting. Yeah. So like, and like the cool with the relationships I had to the AEs, the more they can give me a solid. You know, I'm like a few yeah. from quota, I'm like, ah oh, man, I really need this one to be a, a in the pipeline. I'm like, all right. <laughs> like, yeah. Backroom deals, love it. Yeah, backroom. I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, with, with with that in mind, then what if if you're a if you're a if you're a setter if you're an SDR, what are you looking for in terms of big green flags? Big green flags. Yeah, big green flag first. Like looking for a company. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I would test out like their sales team, like opt in to their thing, see what the sales process is like, like be the person that you would be ultimately calling before mm -hmm. you join. Um, I would also very much look for people who are already working there, see mm -hmm. how it is. So I do my own due diligence behind the scenes. And then you can kind of judge from like the interview process, like how serious is it? Is it too serious? Then you're like, ah, it's a red flag. Um, but I mean, a big green flag is like, do they do a role play with you? Okay. Like, are they actually genuinely interested in how you are as a salesperson or are you just one number Me and if you work out, you work out? If not, they'll just hire another commission only person, right? Because there's no skin off their back, right? <clears throat> you're not a W-2, you're not getting set up in ADP, you're not doing all these things, right? You're you're kind of a trial in the beginning. So you want to make sure that they're vested in you as you're vested in them. Yep. That's, Makes a, sense. that's a big green flag for me. Okay. What are what are the big glaring red flags? Glaring red flags? Yeah. Um is like how like again the beginning, right? Like green flag. The adverse of that is like, you can't even opt in. You can't book a call on their website. Like they, their SEO is bad. Um, you research competitors and they're nowhere near, there's like way too big of competitors and they're like a little fish, right? You know, you're just gonna have a very hard job. So you kind of want to just make yourself like, you want to work on good offers, right? Where you don't have to pull teeth for a meeting, right? Yeah. Um, so big red flag is like, how the company's positioned in the marketplace. What is their success to this point? How, you know, established are they? Yep. Um, like I've, I've worked at a company, I didn't do the due diligence um, that I'm talking about now, a dumber Dylan. Um, but like, I closed a massive commission, they literally couldn't pay me on. Like they were too small of a company. They were like, whoa, that's a real big commission check there. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> hey, you <need> yeah. <laughs> I'm growing your, like, this is a huge red flag, right? Like getting paid late commissions don't come on time. Um, Hey man, can we split up your commission 50, 50? Like you gotta make sure that the company is big enough and established enough where you're like, you are going to get the money you're owed. Yep. And that comes back to the other things like talking to other people mm. because the like, interview process and sales, you are interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing, they're interviewing you. you. Yeah. hundred percent. Like you need to ask the question that you need to hear answered for you to feel confident in that job. You shouldn't be like, oh, thank you so much. I'm not worthy for this job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for even considering me. Like, no, Like make them earn you. You are the prize. And, and that goes back to like how you sell eventually anyway, right? If you yeah. are placative during your interview and they let you in, they probably don't care if you're placative on the calls either. Yeah. I mean, we've had multiple people we've gotten jobs with this much sales experience. And the reason they got the job is because they did the job to get the job. Yeah, they prospected the hiring person, they reached out to them, they sent a video of themselves after they applied. They they had confidence, like, I'm going to be your best SDR. Mm -hmm. Like, they stood out, they didn't just apply and Go through the stand, yeah. Hopefully I get an actor for an interview. Like, no, like, do the job. You're prospecting. You are setting the meeting. Be if you show the person, like, this is what you're doing and you don't even have the job, like, this guy's going to be pretty good when he actually has the job. Yeah, he if actually gets paid right for this. <laughs> yeah. So, like, always be, always be selling. But, like, seriously, <laughs> it's corny but good advice. I think when it's like, when you're a closer, people like my, my DMS are filled with people who have like asked me to be commission only closers. And honestly, if I'm being completely transparent, like your approach and how you do it is 100% going to be the determining factor and whether I say yes or no. And the reason for that is I'm going to have to teach you how to sell. And if your approach sucks, I'm going to extrapolate that across everything else that you also do. Yeah. <clears throat> if, if your approach is weird or you come on a little too strong or your approach sucks, I'm going to assume that that also carries through how you sell. 
there was one person who sent me like a six minute loom video like a rambling loom video and like i wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt i genuinely did but no no shot absolutely zero hope ever and yeah. like it's nothing against him but your approach sucked <laughs> And that's not why would, why would I put my name on that? I'm not going to. So yeah, go find us. Yeah, I mean, so like <clears throat> Jacoby, right? He he prospected and he followed up so much with mm -hmm. me, where I was like, this guy is going to be great. I just know it. Like I just forgot about it. He keeps yeah. pinging me in Slack. He goes, hey man, like you got any opportunities? Like he would like he saw my recent posts and like made it relevant to me. Like he saw I went on vacation. He goes, hey man, how was that? Like, like just pinging, pinging and pinging and like yeah. doing actual sales. And I'm like, all right, like, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, you're right. Let's get your job. Um, but if you just didn't do that, I might have not have put him to the top of the list. There are, there are like four or five people in my DMs who I need to reply to and I've literally just been too lazy to do it because I've had other shit on. And I'm like, okay, all of you have followed up more than once. Some of you have been like persistent as shit. Okay, fair enough. It's now me being an asshole that isn't, look, this yeah. isn't about you, this is me. So it's like, okay, prioritize those people. People that hit you up once and it's like, I want a job, probably aren't gonna get it. You just have to yeah. be like, like do the job before the job, I think is actually great advice. Yeah, do the job, of, do the job that you want to get. Show them that you're actually competent in the thing that you want them to do. Um, the thing that cracks me up sometimes is like, obviously like for our coaching program, there's a one-time fee. It's nothing that's going to, you know, take food off the table, right? Yeah. It's priced specifically for that, yeah. but we'd ought to know that you're investing in your success, right? Yeah. Like for us to invest time in your success. So whenever we like, talk to people like, ah, I'm just really not looking to pay money to get a job. I'm like. Well, how's it going otherwise? <laughs> how's yep. it going otherwise? It, it couldn't be, it, it's not going great because we're on the phone or we're talking right now. So like, sometimes you do have to invest in things to get the things that you want. Like you pay for speed. Yeah. We had a guy that joined, his one big thing was like, what if happens if I don't get placed yep. after I graduate? I was like, well, I don't know. We, we never had that situation occur. And he was like, so, um, and replacement six days. Yeah. Like during the slack six days later, I signed the contract. So it's like, would you pay for that? Yeah, exactly. Or do you want to go on monster.com and fucking talk with people who put their job on monster.com? Cause you also got to think the business owners that talk to you and to me, they trust us. That's people who train salespeople. So they just yeah. want people that we have kind you of finger for. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you want the seal of approval. Otherwise, you would go to any random prick and see what results you get, right? But they don't want that. They want people who know how to sell and have clearly displayed yeah. that. And then they're like, okay, cool. I'm now going to go and trust you to do this job effectively. Great. And like they hire people that we train because they trust our training ability. So you have a very easy abridged job interview process and we're only going to work with people who have good offers so you're it's a win-win for you know paying for placement and training in sales 100 percent. everyone's against it like i have sales experience i don't think i need any more it's like you're not all right then don't get <laughs> sick <sales>. yeah <laughs> go go find your own job then i'm not gonna fucking find one for you yeah you don't got it like you don't i'm not trying i'm not begging you to join like yeah <laughs> people are, people crack me up the 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 big thing like i say to people that want to join my program is that like i'm only ever going to put you on offers that i know are sellable yeah either because i have someone selling it right now and they want another person or because i know the person who you're going to be selling for and i know their offer is legit like i'm not going around hunting for random bullshit offers so that i can place closes and take a fee because then you get screwed and you come through me. So that's a reflection on me and the business gets screwed because they can't sell their crappy offer anyway. And then it just looks like it's my problem and it's not. It's the fact that you're a crap offer. So I'm not going to put that on you or on me because either way I have to deal with the fallout and I'm just going to deal with that. Yeah. And like, I have people all the time like, Hey man, I need setters. Hey man, I need closers. Yeah. 
I'm like, cool, what's the offer? Yeah. Like, I, I disqualify them. You'd be proud of me. Um, but like, I understand the, the role itself. And if yeah. I, I have personal vested interest in all of our students. Yeah. I talk to them twice a week on Zoom. I talk to them in Slack. Yeah. Like, those are my guys. I'm not going to place you on a dog shit offer just because someone wants a setter. Yeah. Exactly. So, 100%. Yeah. I, think, I, I think had one guy, it goes to our main, our original point of like compensation. He was like, all right, well, I want. <laughs> The guy's delusional, but he's like, yeah, I want the guys to come in with their own lead list and their own scripts. What? And then they're going to make the calls and do the emails themselves through their own software. I can't even make, I do. I can't even, luckily it was in DMs. I, I, I would have hung up, the, I would have ended the Zoom call, but, um, and then they get paid off clothes. So I, I just did a recap DM. I was like, so let me get, let, let me just make sure I'm, you know, understanding correctly. So you want one of our guys to come in with a pre-filled lead list of your contacts, your ICP, your ideal customers. And then you want them to have a pre-written script for an offer they've never heard of to convert those people to a meeting. <laughs> and then by the grace of God, they have these things and they book a qualified meeting on your calendar you then have to close them and then they get 10% of the deal. And this, it was $3,000 deal. So $300. So I was like, let me just get this right. He goes, yep. <laughs> I was like, nope. <laughs> like, like, I was like, how does that make any logical sense? The way in which I wrote that $300 for one close genuinely. Do, doing this makes yeah. me lose so fucking like, faith in humanity that's what people, people are, are genuinely like insane when it comes to this stuff it's like yeah but like that's what i want like okay and i just yeah, good for you <laughs> i'm yeah. not gonna sell it to you because that's insane no one's taking that deal and if they do honestly at that point you deserve it <laughs> yeah I want to shoot 72 in golf, but I, I'm not doing that right now. I want, I want to like, yeah, just cause you want something does not mean that you're going to get it. I think the, the consider like, a rational human being. <clears throat> yeah. That's um, a red flag in sales. In, in, in one DM. That's all of them right there in one. The, the, the craziest part for me, I think yeah. when I, when I speak to companies, you're like, yeah, yeah, I want clients. And it's like, okay, cool. How many leads do you currently, how, how many do you currently a month? <laughs> oh, like. 10 I'm like okay and is it that you just don't want to be in the sales side of it anymore and and you don't you, like you you just don't want to take the calls and they're like no That's i want to take point. calls too and it's like how many fuck calls is this person gonna take i don't know like five or six a month okay how big is your deal size 3k right how much are you gonna pay them in conversation i don't know like 10 percent. like okay so you want this person to work for you essentially full time but in reality, five calls a month. So that's basically one call a week for a maximum compensation at a hundred percent close rate of 1500 bucks. And they're like, yes, what, who is taking these deals? Like, where have you got these numbers from? And they're like, oh, should I just take the calls myself? Yes, you should. You should also improve your fucking lead gen process, but that's not the, the discussion I'm having. Right. But like people do not understand call volume equally. Yeah. People can get really crazy with call volume. I spoke to someone recently who said that they were having one closer take 90 calls a month. I was like, what, why? They were like, because she does it full time. And I'm like, yeah, like that's not full time. That's like awful, awful, awful fucking time. a job and a half. How long are the calls? 45 minutes to an hour. And I was like, a yeah. 90 hours a month. You are working this girl to the bone. And they're like, yeah, it's fine. She likes it. Did she send follow up emails? No, Does she clue. Do a absolutely call? no idea. But at ninety hours a month, dude, like even in my mind, that's that's an egregious amount of time. Minimum every Agreed. single workday, you are spending four hours on calls. Minimum. In reality, it's what more than that. 
Yeah, because you need yeah. like a closer is not just on the calls. Like there's a whole other administrative yep. back end. You have to update the pipeline, put in notes, report yep. to the business owner or manager, follow up yep. on de- not every deal closed on the first call. Like, ah, sorry, I got 89 other calls this round, guess, Rob. Guess, guess is, uh, which we leave this one here because you didn't close it right now. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> hope, you have, hope you send me a follow up. <laughs> hey, really enjoyed your time selling me today. Um, but awesome. I think to wrap it up, um, pay salespeople in yeah. direct proportion to how much money they generate your company. Don't be cheap. The cheaper you are, the worse your salespeople, the and less the more detrimental it's going to be the growth of your business. Yeah. The less money you want to make. So, you got to spend money to make, and money. that's from the business owner side and on Simple. the the salesperson but, side. Pay for coaching, but both of us run coaching programs because yeah. we know how to sell and we know how coach. to teach sales. So pay us, and we will help you, and you will get placed on offers that are good. Right? We I I, I put Frank, one of my closers, uh, on Scott Miller's offer. Right? First week close, and he was like, "Yo, this is sick," and I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> Scott has a great offer. It's not, it's not super hard to close, but like, just take the calls and you'll close." And he's like, "I right, bet, close, close." I took two of Scott's calls because I was like, "Ah, oh, Scott's overbooked. Let me jump on and, and and see what I can do." One to close, one verbal, like just pay someone who knows what they're doing to help you do this, and you will get jobs and you will close deals. It's as simple as that, or you will set deals in your case. Yeah. It's so simple. <clears throat> so simple. You wouldn't think we'd have to talk about it for a half hour, but we do. Um, so if you guys are listening to this video and you're, yeah, want help, hit both of us up. Um, and then Let's we'll go. see you next week for.